Hey guys, how you doing? And welcome to another episode of Arnold Space Station. So, in today's episode, we are going to go ahead and have a look at Process Builder. So, um, what is Process Builder? Salesforce has a lot of automation tools, by the way. Uh, Process Builder is one of them. Uh, it certainly is visual, and uh, it doesn't need you to know some code. So, we're going to have a look at, as part of this multi-mini series that we're going to kind of look at doing, uh, how to go ahead and update a field inside Salesforce. So a lot of our customers usually will come up to us and say, hey, you know what, as part of this particular project, when an opportunity is closed based on our products uh, and services that we offer, uh, we would like to go ahead and put in a renewal date. Uh, that could end up being 6, 12, 24, 36, or you know, all the way up to 60 months, depending on the product or the service being offered. Um, so using Process Builder, we can go ahead and very easily do that. Uh, and I'm going to show you how we can uh, do so right now. Okay, so what we're gonna go ahead and do today is we are going to update uh, a brand new field that I have created on the account called status. Um, when an opportunity goes to closed one. This is very basic, but what we're gonna go ahead and check first is we'll go into accounts, we'll pick up an account, uh, American Banking Corp, and we're gonna go ahead and have a look and see whether that field, yes, that custom field status that I've created does exist. And it's also got three different values. Beautiful. So what we're gonna go ahead and do to create that process builder um, we need to navigate to the top right hand corner of Salesforce into setup and load the setup page. Once you've loaded the setup page, uh, in quick find on the left hand side, we need to look for process builder. So if you type in process underneath process automation, you'll find process builder. Now, once you go into it, it'll take you to another page. Uh, just be mindful, you can only be in one process builder page at a time. Um, it won't let you do uh, more than one in one screen. You'll have to open up a brand new tab. Uh, it's just the way it works. So we're gonna go ahead and create a brand new process. Now we're going to call this um, Opti to update account to active on closed one. Now, I always like putting in as much detail as possible into the process name. I definitely think you should as well. And in the description, try and add as much as possible again. Uh, in some cases, if it's very straightforward, and it's only doing one thing, um, I usually copy the exact same name to the description. Makes sense to me. Uh, but you have to remember when you're building things for Salesforce, you also want to make it uh, easily legible and easily understandable by someone that hasn't built the org. So I'm gonna say when Opti goes to close, closed one. The account must be updated to a status of active, no matter what status it was on. Great, so once I've gone ahead and filled in the description, we then have an option to select when this process starts. Now, remember we are going to be doing this when an opportunity goes to closed one. So out of these three options, uh, it's definitely not another process that will invoke it. It's definitely not a platform event message that will be received. A user is going to be making the opportunity closed one, um, or it might be another system process that's, that might do it, but it's definitely not another process that's outside Salesforce. So we're gonna select record changes because a stage in the opportunity updates. So once I click save, it'll then give us this screen now. Process Builder is very, very visual, which is great. Uh, anyone that used workflows and things like that may have found it quite hard to navigate around, especially with the formulas. Um, so the first thing we're gonna need to do is figure out what's going on here. So essentially when something happens, um, 
we need to have the object that starts off the process, right? So we've got start, we add the object. We then have the ability to add a series of criteria. And then based on that criteria, we can go ahead and have either an immediate action um, or we can go ahead and have a time lapse, uh, which means that after a period of time, um, something else might happen as well. Or we can completely skip the immediate action and just have something ha happen at a particular time. Now you can continue to have more of these criteria and more actions depending on what criteria or, or rather what pro business process um, the customer has. In this case, I'm gonna try and keep it very simple. I'm gonna show you how to do one and in a later series we can certainly pick it up and explore all the other features. So we're gonna start off with the opportunity. So in here, I'm gonna type in OPP and that's gonna allow me to select uh, the object. Now in here, remember, we wanna measure this criteria, uh, not only when the record is created, but it's also edited because there might be a possibility the record's created a closed one, uh, but there's also the other likelihood that the record will end up at closed one from the previous stages that exist as part of the sales process. Um, if we click on this advanced, uh, no, we do not want anything that is going to be uh, recursive. So I'm just going to click save. It's just a one-time thing. Uh, I'm not trying to set up anything that's time-based. Now that you see that I haven't selected recursive, the time-based uh, criteria has gone away. Uh, or time-based actions have gone away, sorry. So I'm going to add a criteria in here now. So I'm going to select, uh, I'm going to name it Opti. Um, goes to closed one, right? And in this case, I'm gonna say the conditions are met and it gives you conditions using fields. You can also choose to write your own formulas uh, if you are proficient and if that is a better way to do it. Or the other option is you can have no criteria uh, and just execute the actions. I would highly recommend you don't do this. Um, you're more than likely to end up having a lot of errors come through because um, certain things might be missing. So I'm going to keep it simple. Let's go to conditions are met. And in this case, I'm looking uh, for the stage. The stage must equal closed one. Perfect. I do want to have a look at a few other things here because I think every time it equals to closed one and someone saves the record, it may in fact keep setting the account to active, even though it may not necessarily need to be active or it's already active. So I'm gonna have a look at the operators and see what's there. So, oh, we do have another one here. I just found it's called is changed. So I'm gonna select and leave equals to, and I'm gonna add another piece of criteria to the exact same field. So because it's a pick list, it'll allow us to use is changed as well, which is kind of cool. So I'm gonna select the opportunity name is changed and the Boolean needs to be true. Um, if we scroll further down, we have a few different options. We can either choose the and option. Um, so essentially what this is doing is this is creating a formula uh, nonetheless but it's giving you the ability with fields so that way you don't have to know what formula you need to put in. Um, and then we've got something called custom logic. Now, I really like this. This is really cool, especially if your criteria as part of the business process is quite complex. Um, but in this case, um, we do not need to go there just yet. Uh, we're gonna go ahead, select closed one, and we wanna make sure that the opportunity stage is in fact changed. If it's not changed, it should not be updating the account because maybe there's a, uh, someone's just going back to make changes to an already one opportunity. I'm gonna leave advanced. Uh, we don't need to worry about that for this particular um, process builder. As you can see, once we've put in the criteria, it then gives us the option to add more uh, and you can continuously add more. You can also choose to rearrange them uh, right now, I've only got one, but if you have more than one, you can certainly rearrange them. Uh, and as part of this, we're going to select uh, an action. Now, if you have a look in here, uh, there are quite a few actions, but we are not looking to use any of them except for update records. 
Now, once I select update records, I'm then going to go ahead and uh, type in update account oops, to active update account status to active. Beautiful. Now in here, it's gonna say record type, but if you click on that, it'll give you a pop-up and it'll say, you know, whether you wanna update the exact same record that you started with or related one. In this case, we are updating the account. So the account is related to the opportunity, which is great. And once you click on that, it is going to give you another field and in here I'm gonna type in ACC. And uh, we don't wanna dig in further uh, with this greater than sign, we just want to update a field on that record itself. So we're just going to select the ID. Once I select the ID, uh, I have a further criteria here to only update uh, things which do not meet uh, certain conditions. So yes, I am going to put that option in. Um, this is just always a good fail safe. So I'm going to make sure that um, I put in status uh, and I'm going to select does not equal active so it's only going to update those records that aren't already active which is kind of cool as opposed to just flat out updating everything and um, we're going to go ahead and select the actual field again which is status and we want to make sure that we set it to active as part of that update so a recap here again any fields as part of this action that do not uh, equal active will be updated to active on the status. Beautiful, I'm gonna go ahead and save that. I think that's all we need. Uh, I'm gonna make it active. And I'm gonna confirm that. And now I'm gonna go ahead and test this. So I'm gonna go back into the front end. Uh, I'm gonna leave the status as none for the moment. I'm gonna go to the related list and I'm gonna create a brand new opportunity. Now, as part of this opportunity, I'm just gonna call it uh, test field update process builder. I'm then gonna put in a close date for today. I'm gonna select the stage as uh, needs analysis for the moment. And those are all the mandatory fields that we need. So I'm gonna save that record. Now I'm gonna go into the record and I'm gonna make this record closed one and let's see what happens. Great, it went to closed one, didn't throw out any errors. Um, now we're gonna go ahead and Open up the account in a brand new tab to see whether that status field in fact has been updated. So this is the account connected to that opportunity. If I go to details and scroll down, great. You will notice that that has now been set to active. I hope you guys had some fun in learning how you can update a field. Uh, stay tuned for some more fun with Salesforce. Hey guys, thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed this episode. Please ensure you subscribe to this channel so you can get all the brand new episodes that are coming up. Please also ensure you share this material if you liked it and make sure you click here for some more videos.